The number one inhibitor or contributor is going to be the atmosphere. Okay. And you can you have very little control over that. Uh, the things you can control are ensuring that your antenna, your antenna is optimized for the band, for the frequency that you're trying to work. And certain styles of antennas, uh, dipoles, vertical antennas. Some vertical antennas require a ground plane okay. underneath the antenna. Um, and it'll, uh, that will affect your launch angle, basically the angle that your your signal takes, whether it takes like a near vertical or horizontal to get you uh, so bounce it off can the atmosphere. Pitch, pitch at different uh, angles. Correct. Yeah. Are, uh, this one has a rotor on it uh, that it was talking about, so it's going to rotate the, uh, the. Yeah. Now this style of antenna here, called a, <coughs> a Yagi antenna, is very directional. It's a very directional antenna, meaning that. You're going to have much better performance in a very specific direction, um, and so when you put it up on top of a tower, you need a rotator so that you can you can direct that signal to where you want to be. So you know, we may angle it up, you know, say five or ten degrees for New York, right? Or you know, 290, 300 degrees to get out Washington State, You're talking Oregon, about a 360 Alaska. Degree. Right, right. So from your axis, the direction that you're... The a azimuth is uh, the, uh, your, your angle, you, you, the degrees on them. So if you were looking at wherever you're sitting, if you were looking at um, a projection of the Earth, wherever your point is, then the um, and zero being directly to the pole, then your azimuth is uh, you know 360 degrees around that circle, right? And so you use a rotor with a Yagi antenna to point in that direction, okay. so that you're you're directing your signal directly at your target. So you're going 270, you're going east, as opposed to zero, you're going north or 180 going south. Yeah. You don't use like a flight code where you're north by northeast or north by northwest. Right, and it's it's a little bit different. Be, I mean, and it's not like you you can't just lay it out on a flat map and say, okay, I'm here, he's here, and you know this is my angle, right? right? Because it's not accurate. No, it's relative to north. Right. Well, it, well, even if you were like north on on the map and your angle is this way, like say to Africa, okay? but your actual angle is going to be different because. Yeah, uh, I didn't like that part. The actual term <laughs> escapes me right now, but it's basically because of the curvature of the Earth. You have to. It's like a. Is it polar polar projection? Looking back and looking back. Is where you're bouncing think, off but, the cloud. Well, no, but base, because it's a sphere, the, the the planet. You know, it's not. It's what you see on a flat map isn't isn't accurate or the shortest path between the two. So it's basically it's the same the same. Uh, same thing like if you were uh, flying an airplane from one point to another. You know, you want to take your shortest path to minimize your fuel usage, right? And so it, it's the same thing. You want to take the, the, the most direct path um, with your radio. And then, of course, there are other challenges to it as well. I mean, some guys, once they, once they know that, they may turn it 180 degrees from that point and do a reverse. See what's on the other end of the All the way around the planet to try to reach the same destination. Oh, go with the other way around. The atmosphere. So once they pinpoint the locator of the person they're talking to, then they can set that from any location? In other words, they move to another state? Yeah, and I mean, we make a lot of use of information that's on the internet. So if, uh, say, an operator is using a... Uh, <laughs> uh, DX spotting service, right? And they uh, they see a call sign from somebody in the country that they really want to talk to, or they really want to to make contact with somebody from this country because they may need it for some award that they're trying to get. So they want to get this particular country, and if they see a call sign come up in their DX spotter for somebody from that country, okay, they may turn their beam directly at that country, so they have the best possible chance of communicating with somebody at that location. And, Thank you. Uh, I mean, directional antennas like this, it's, it's like everything is a compromise. You know, directional antennas, you get super performance in one particular direction, but people that are in your, <coughs> in your quiet zones, in your nulls, right? Like your Which, and for a directional antenna, the null is, is like nearly everything all the way around. So, you know, your nulls so directly on left and right, you're not going to hear anything over here.
So, you know, you could have strong signals over here, but they would be very weak or non-existent to your receiver because your antenna is not optimized. It's a unidirectional, right? Um, but an omnidirectional antenna is equally, has equal performance on all sides. in all sides, but it's lesser performance. So not, not as much, uh, not as many channels, not as many stations. So. Well, it, and not as much. Uh, you, you don't have as much receiving uh, strength. You're not as sensitive on the receiving end, okay. and you're not as powerful on the transmitting side I with an mean. omnidirectional okay. antenna because you're radiating that signal in all directions. Whereas with a directional antenna, you're focusing all the power of your transmission in one specific direction. Now, is power a big factor here? How much power you have on the back end of the antenna? Uh, I notice you have from five watts and up in some of these cases. Yeah, I mean, power does play a factor, but it's power doesn't play as big of a factor. Not as the a lot of it the I mean, equipment. The amplifier manufacturers want you to think it makes a, a huge difference, okay. and you know, it, it it can, but it's it's really, you know, like I said, number one is is atmospheric conditions, which you can't control. Number two is your antenna type. You know, you have to have an antenna that's optimized for the frequency band that you're trying to work and the mode you're trying to work. Um, and once those two things are accomplished, then you can start focusing on power. Right. But people that, you know, that they're, you know, if you try to shove a ton of power into a non-optimized antenna, you're just, ra you're just <laughs> wasting power. You're turning it into heat. What handle do you go by? Pardon? What's your handle? What do you go by? Uh, KT2T. And your name? Mike Oliver. Mike Oliver. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah, no problem.